Now that you have a general understanding of how SOLIDWORKS inspection works and what it's intended for, let's take a look at a quick demonstration of its capabilities. On the Getting Started tab, we're going to choose the New Project option. The first pop-up that we see contains the first of three different kinds of templates that SOLIDWORKS inspection uses. If you remember from the first video, this is the one that creates the project and lets you begin with certain settings. We're going to choose the AS9102 inches option, but you can see that right out of the box, inspection comes with the metric option, and you can create additional templates simply by setting up a project to your desires and then saving it as a project template. So we'll begin by choosing this AS9102 inches and saying OK. And we are going to choose now from a PDF or TIFF file, because as you recall, we're in the standalone version of the software. Let's choose a PDF document. And you'll notice that the Project Properties pane opens up automatically on the left-hand side. This is going to be where we capture the different aspects of the drawing that are its name, its number, its revision, things that are going to identify it from one project to another. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the lower right corner here, and let's get something like the name of the drawing. We'll come over to the part name, and of course we could just type this in if we desired, or we can choose the Optical Character Recognition tool by choosing this Capture Property button, and then dragging and drawing a box around the text we'd like to capture. As you can see, it captures that text and places it inside of the box here on the left-hand side of the Project Properties window. Let's continue by grabbing the drawing number, drawing a box around the text, and seeing how it comes in. We'll go and grab the revision, and then say OK to our properties. Now we'll go and capture all of the nominal dimensions off of the drawing, as well as the GD&T frames and any additional notes that we'd like to put in as part of the project. We'll go to the Drawing tab, and you'll see that in the Extract section we have those different flavors of the OCR tool. In this case, we'll choose the one that's optimized for dimensions. We'll go ahead and draw a box around the nominal value, just like we did before with the text and the title block. And this time, it's going to take a small photograph, essentially, of what we have on the PDF and then parse it into the information that we're interested in capturing. Here we see that we have the nominal value as well as the upper and lower tolerance and then a calculated upper and lower limit. We have the option to go and change the inspection methods, including the operation that was used to create that particular part. So anodizing, bending, cutting, deburring, anything that was used to manufacture that part's operation could be done there. We can go into the classification and change whether this is a critical, major, minor, or incidental dimension. And then we can even specify what methodology will be used to inspect the particular feature or dimension or GD&T tolerance on that part. Now all of these lists that you see in the drop downs are customizable, and we can add our own custom customize comments to put any additional information that we want to capture into the drawing or additional instructions or any change orders. You'll also see that we have a section for customizing the balloon shape, color, and fit. And then at the bottom here, we also have a final area with custom lists that you can create any kind of field you want and then use that area for the information that you want to capture and put into the report at the end. Now all of these different customizable areas can be done individually on a case-by-case -case basis per characteristic, or you can do multiple characteristics with standard settings like so, and then come through and select the balloons all at once and change all of their settings simultaneously. For example, if we go to our Home tab and perhaps we want to change the outside from uh, red to orange and the inside to yellow and then change the text to be black, we can do so. Now we can do the same thing with GD&T, grabbing that OCR flavor and then drawing a box around the frame. We can capture that and you see that it says C print for GTAL. Now what that means is that quite literally whatever is in this preview window here will be copy and pasted as an image into the Excel report. If we need to have plain text, we have the ability to go into the drop downs here and recreate that GD&T frame using standard plain text. We can draw a box around the number that's inside of our GD&T frame and capture that using OCR, and then simply type in our A, B, and C reference datums. From there, you see down in our table manager at the bottom of the screen that a preview of our final Excel report is being generated, and we can preview that plain text characteristic GD&T frame. Inspection's OCR tool is also highly intelligent. It's optimized to recognize and handle dimensions that don't have your typical upper and lower limit of tolerance that have the same value. So for example, we have one here that is asymmetric and then of course a min and max limit value. Let's go ahead and draw a box using the OCR tool around these two different types of dimensions and see how the OCR tool handles it. 
Over on the left hand side, you'll see that it still recognized the nominal value and was able to capture the upper and lower tolerances even though they're not the same number. If we come over to the limit dimension here and draw a box around it, you'll see that it also recognizes that there should be no tolerances placed in the boxes, and instead we just have an upper and lower absolute limit. Over on the far right we have this radius dimension, and there are two of them and no default tolerance. If we draw a box around this one, what you'll see here is that it still recognizes the nominal value, but it does add an upper and lower tolerance. These values are coming from the project property template. And if we go to the options for this template, you can see under the imaging and OCR and general tabs, how there is a default tolerance set by precision. So the number of significant figures of the nominal value will determine what your tolerance is going to be on the upper and lower end. And you can set this for as many different project templates as you like, for as many significant figures as you want by going through uh, precision here for both length and angular dimensions, or you can switch it to range and then choose the lower and upper limits and what those tolerance values should be. You'll also see under the Imaging and OCR tab that we can customize the OCR tool's ability to read and interpret the text and the numbers that are on the drawing. The way that it does this is by trying to recognize the type of font that is coming from the CAD program that created the drawing. So in this case, we see that there is an ACAD, CATIA, NX, and standard SOLIDWORKS font options baked right into the OCR tool for SOLIDWORKS inspection. Beneath that, we see that there's a custom dictionary, and this is where you can actually teach the OCR tool any particular font that you use so that it always recognizes that text right away. You also see we have the option for searchable text. So if you save out your PDFs with searchable text and hyperlinks, it will be very, very easy to, for you to pick up any of the text and dimensions off of the drawing because it already recognizes those without the need of OCR. If we go into the ballooning tab, this is where all the default settings live for your default balloons. So the default shape, in this case a circle, the fill color and the border color, in this case red, can all be changed per template so that when you begin a new project, it already has default uh, balloons in the, in the format that you prefer. To save any of the settings that I've shown you here in the project options, you would simply go through and set them to your desires and then come up to the SOLIDWORKS dropdown and go to save as and save an inspection project template. This will create a template in the folder that contains all of the other templates that SOLIDWORKS inspection came with, and this is all referring to the very first template that we showed at the beginning of this project. To wrap this project up, let's go ahead and export our PDF and Excel documents that represent the final report that the entire project was intended to create. We'll go up to the top under the Home tab in the Publish section and go to PDF and Excel. And what we'll do is create a ballooned PDF that will serve as a control document, but also as the roadmap for all of the nominal dimensions we'd have to check and measure and to determine whether or not this part passed or failed. Now that we have that controlled PDF document, we can create our Excel report where we'll actually record those different measured values and check them against our nominals. We'll choose this uh, AS9102 with the image captures, and what this is going to do is take the little preview images that we saw here that we captured with the OCR tool and directly put those into our report. If we choose any of the ones that do not say image captures, it will use plain text. So we'll go ahead and export that now and we'll replace any previous ones that we'd created. And our final Excel report now contains all of those nominal value requirements, their upper and lower limits, and then we can begin keying in our results. So a 0.344, for example, is green because it falls within the upper and lower limits, while a 0.75, for example, is well outside of it, and so it gets color-coded red. Now these color codings can all be customized and you can choose to use them or not. And because this is an Excel-based template, everything that works in Excel is also valid here. Boolean operators, conditional formatting, mathematics, different plots, all of those different statistical analysis that you're used to running inside of Excel continue to work. So you can customize these Excel template reports to be anything that you like. It doesn't have to adhere to an AS9102 standard as it does in this example. You can customize these reports by creating your own from scratch, importing any old Excel spreadsheets you already have that are formatted the way you would like, or just going ahead and modifying the ones that come with inspection out of the box. Those are all edited by going into the SOLIDWORKS inspection interface, going to the Start menu dropdown, and going to the Template Editor. This will open up the Excel template that you choose, 
and then allow you to map the different characteristic tokens to the rows or columns in the report to identify what data you would like mapped from the SOLIDWORKS inspection interface here into the final report. In this way, you can create as many different custom reports as you need, and they can complement the project templates that you created at the beginning. So in this manner, you can co combine together project templates with different report templates and get a very large number of different consistent and standardized documents.